And three, two, one, boom. And we're back with another episode of Scrap Gamers. The episode brought to you by Zenro Clothing Co. Paper Tees and Accessories, ZenroClothingCo.com. And be sure to check out, oh, also use offer code Socrates at checkout for 20% off select items. Be sure to check out the free Zenro radio playlist, dope music for your daily life. Also, if you're located in the Port Union area of Scarborough, Toronto, check out um, the Port Union Bakery. They got some amazing baked goods, uh, baked daily, crafted with love. Okay, so, well, all right, let's just get this out of the way. Max Holloway fought yesterday, mm-hmm. and, uh, yeah, this is pretty, pretty legendary. Uh, I would say that I'm stoked for him to go up against T-City again. That was the, I guess, like, one and only UFC fight that you, have, uh, you and I have gone to, the one in Toronto. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But that's why I think it would be cool if he fights again, because it's like we have a bit of a... Uh, like a like a link there to yeah, you know yeah, I mean? yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. it's like oh we're gonna watch part two of that crazy fight you know right. he totally put away t-city in that last fight and like a lot of people count him out for like two years he hadn't fought but then when he came back after two years he was like crazy good so i think he's gonna be the current champ become the champ and then max will fight for that title which is crazy because like it was roles reverse last time right like mm-hmm. Um, T City was trying to get the championship away from Max, yeah. And then now it'll be Max trying to get the championship away from T City. But yeah, um, they were like, there were so many like memes about um, him being a lot like Muhammad Ali in that one. Like they were showing like a lot of side by side comparisons of like oh, yeah? like iconic moments from Muhammad Ali and like um, Max doing the exact same thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah. Anyways. Probably, probably one of the greatest fighters. I'd say my Mount Rushmore is Khabib, Stylebender, Max, and T City. Everyone talks about GSP being on there, like, oh, he should be on the. But I mean, we weren't really watching UFC. Like, yeah, I, not I when wanna, he was there. We didn't. Yeah, like that was back when I was like twenty, I guess. Like, we're, like I was much younger when he was fighting, and I wasn't mm-hmm. really into it. Um, so we haven't really watched a GSP fight. You and I. Yeah. I don't think I've ever seen it, seen anything of it. So. Yeah, but he's like arguably the greatest of all time. Him next to uh, Khabib. That's why they were going to fight. Well, actually, the Khabib announcement was kind of weird because like he kept like um, sidestepping the actual statement that Khabib made. Yeah, but like he was like, oh, if if Khabib can see something, you know, maybe it'll get him excited. And I was like picking up on the keywords like maybe he'll get excited yeah, and I was yeah. like okay so you're just like building hype you know <laughs> yeah at least one guy um so uh Nick Diaz he fought um GSP before and like when when they were leading up to it it was like the bully versus the uh the good kid fight like that's how they positioned it like Nick Diaz was the bully and like uh, GSP was like the stand-up citizen kind of thing, right? Mm-hmm. And then in that interview, Nick Diaz is like, they're selling you all wolf tickets, and you're all eating them up. You know, basically like like you're you're buying into his marketing. He was saying that at the press conference with um, Dana White and GSP there, and they didn't say anything because it's like, yeah, he knows that it's like, it's all BS. They're just, they're making it hype. Right. You know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Anyways, that out of the way. Max, sick. You did go all all, all the rounds, which was kind of. Oh, true, true. You didn't put him away. Yeah, but I mean, that's that's on the other guy though, because the other guy was really taking it hard. Like, uh, yeah. damn. Like, uh, I was saying, like with that one, like, um, that one combo where he did like the jab to the elbow, and then you could hear the the sound of the elbow hitting his head. I was like. And then he got wobbled, and then everyone's like, "Oh, he's gonna be put away. He's gonna be put away." But he didn't. He didn't get put away. Mm. But I felt like in between rounds, because like they were saying he broke a rib in that, and it was like he almost um, he almost didn't want to quit, but you could see that he was quitting. You know what I mean? Like the fighter, he he was like, "Oh, it's only like two rounds left. Might as well stick it out." But it's like he was contemplating just yeah. quitting. You could see it. You know? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah. But I think with any fighter, you you do want to end it as quick as possible like, to have the least amount of injuries, right? Oh, that guy? Yeah, to, yeah, totally. To, I mean, to any fighter. Yeah, you don't want to, like, why are you going to... If you're going to lose no matter what, why are you going to fight till the very end? Like, you know? 
uh, yeah. Well, I guess like that's the warrior spirit, but at the same time, it's also a sport. It's yeah, not like, yeah, yeah. even Max said that he's like, he's like, oh, everyone always says like, it's so bloody, it's so dangerous, but he's like, you guys don't understand. There's like refs. Like this is not crazy, you mm-hmm. know. It's not like actual gladiator times when it's like swords and like you're gonna die, you know. No, that's true. No one's gonna like die, but we know the other issues with you know, oh, getting punched in the head. Yeah, brain damage. Yeah, totally. Yeah. That but, is, you know, that that's what's really cool. I think I'm gonna find the interview. Like it just came out, but he was saying so. Like he hadn't sparred for this fight or his last fight, mm-hmm. and then he was saying like you only have one brain. Like save your hits. That's why he doesn't spar hard anymore. He's like, I'm getting hit in the fight. If I get hit in practice too, it's like, right, yeah. It's like you're just double damaging me, mm. you know. So yeah. Um, what? Yeah. Well, the other thing, the crowd's back. I actually kind of I missed it. I remember I was saying like, oh, I kind of like this better without a crowd because like you can focus on the fight. But like, there's something that is added when you have the crowd because like. There are a couple of moments there where they were shouting like Max, 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 or Holloway, Hall, and you're like, ooh, that's gotta like boost you. Up, yeah, you yeah, know? yeah, I think it does with, to the fighters at least. Yeah, yeah, because then then Max starts showboating and like all that. But I, I like this new um, paradigm of like positivity at UFC because like instead of like talking smack about your opponent, like what they do now is like. They just, like they say good things, you know. Like at the end of that thing, he's like, "Oh, you know, that was just for the fight, blah blah." And then his opponent was like, "If you're not a Max fan, you're a hater." And it's mm-hmm. like, "Yeah, dude, like that's sick." Yeah, yeah. Well, you is know, that before, the first like, one, or is that just? No, no, no. It's it's been going for a while. Like mm-hmm. T City started it, and then uh, Rose Nami Yunus did it. They, there was like this movement of positivity, whereas like I feel like the old school is like let's talk crap about each other in order to sell the fight. Yeah. But now it's more about skill. So it's like, I don't need to talk crap about you. We both know we're really good. So let's see who, who's going to be like number one, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. like uh, Connor still using those tactics, which is like kind of, it feels outdated now when I see that, like it feels, it feels more contemporary when you see fighters being like, no, he's a great opponent. Right. You know? Mm. Yeah. Less hate in the world. That's better. Yeah. Um, I, I guess one more thing before we move on to CES. Oh, wait, no, no. Uh, so I saw this article and it was saying how, like, UFC uh, helped promote the far right mm-hmm. of uh, okay. Trump's agenda. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I actually agree because I started to notice that, like, coming up to the election, like, you had all these UFC fighters, like, being pro Trump. There's one guy who's, like, his whole shtick was, like, He's a pro-Trump supporter, so he always wore the MAGA hat, the suit. He'd carry around Donald Trump Jr.'s yeah. book. Like, it was just, like, a, a gimmick, mm-hmm. right? And, like, I get it. Like, it's a gimmick, but, like, yeah, you were polarizing people by doing that, you know? Because they started to say, like, like having UFC fighters be pro-Trump, like, actively on mm-hmm. the thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. weird. It's weird how, like, cultural, like, like, entertainment really shapes your psyche. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was odd. Okay, one more thing before we hit up uh, Bitcoin. Oh, sorry, sorry, before we hit up uh, the CES, it was Bitcoin. So it went down, but then went back up. So it lost all that money, and then now it's back up again. So it's like the volatility of this thing is crazy. But you were saying it's because they open up in Antarctic or something like that? No, I don't know. That's, 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 these are all like PR stunts to kind of bring more hype around it, to get more people to get into it. Yeah, but but the main the main issue with Bitcoin is that instead of like you were saying to me, how does currency? Well, the, yeah, the original we talked about it earlier, but like the original thing is like it's meant to be used as currency, and the only way what makes it a currency is by actually spending. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And if you're holding, the, waiting the, for it to get, you know, um, like the value of it getting bigger, then it becoming in more of an asset and not a currency. Yeah, and the only way currencies gain values if people are actively using that's why the US dollar is like so good. Well, I guess you would say like the pound is the best one, right? Cuz it's two no, times the US dollar. T- tech- yes, but um everybody uses US dollar. Like, yeah, so the the value is much but they they also don't um like if US dollar was a stock then we'd all be making lots of money by investing in the U S dollar, but like currencies aren't usually stocks. 
but no. this is this is a currency that's also a stock. Yeah. So it's like it, it's it's, uh, it's conflicting. It's, it's more acting like a stock or like an asset, right, versus actual currency because no one's really using it for spending on things. They're just yeah waiting hoarding it to wait for it to grow. Well, but but if you if you hoard it, there's no it. Or so like. A stock is more about something that you can buy and sell, sort of yeah. like a like a Tesla car. So if they just made a bunch of Tesla cars and like stockpiled them, but not, nobody's buying them, yeah. so then it's like, well, it's destined to fail. Yeah, exactly. That's kind of what Bitcoin's doing. It's yeah, like, because there's no, like, what's the end result here? And for, no, for Bitcoin. nobody's. Yeah, exactly. So it's like, okay, so you're gonna sell it for like two million dollars, but still nobody's using it, so it's worthless. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of weird. But I, I have been seeing, like, the Visa, Bitcoin, MasterCard thing. It's, like, cryptocurrency. Mm-hmm. But it's just, like, I don't see that being a viable source of business. It's just a... Um, they're, 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 just, they're just covering their bases. Yeah, exactly, yeah. They're just dabbling in to make sure if anything does happen in that field... That we can make money. Yeah, yeah. yeah totally. Because yeah. we have a foothold that's, like, our credit cards accept. Like, if you're at a store, you can pay with crypto mm-hmm. using our mm-hmm. credit card, you know? But it's like, yeah, I don't think it's banking on it as its next no. as its next thing. No. Yeah. All right. So now on to the real amazingness mm-hmm. of this week was CES. We're living in the future. So what are some of the things that you oh, were stoked on, Vish? Oh, well, all right. Because <laughs> it's salient in my mind. Um, I'm going to say with the razor mask. Yeah. Yeah. That one for me, I was like. I know you guys don't like it because, like, the the mouth opening. Yeah, no, the, you, the, 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 you can see the mouth, yeah. You're yeah. right, though, the spittle. <laughs> you're like, oh, you're, you're going to see, like... Like spit marks. Yeah, 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 which that. is not good. <laughs> <laughs> or, or even moisture, I guess, because if you're breathing onto it. That's like, true, yeah, yeah, yeah. It could fog up. Yeah, fog up, yeah, yeah. They should have just made it, like, no, not clear. I don't know. I, I didn't, like, watch, like, specifically. Maybe they have... Uh, ways to deal with that okay cool but i didn't watch their presentation on it um i think it's just concept right now so okay yeah yeah all right so, so what, what are you i, I was more focused to? uh the one that I actually like focused on was more uh with the ev cars thing and especially with with gm they really focused on only nothing but ev cars in that presentation oh huh, interesting and what they're planned by 2023 it's like like 30 cars or something i don't know something like that wow and uh 30 car options on the road yeah for ev Cur- currently tesla's only got three no what uh uxy four four out on market yeah, yeah. and then yeah like it's just now you see the actual push of ev especially with gm and then bringing the cadillac bringing hummer totally back. yeah yeah, yeah. that, that was funny when he's like uh we do see the irony of the hummer <laughs> being an ev it's like yeah because that was one of the most like gas guzzling cars exactly yeah but but with that the um uh the ev stuff it's funny because i was watching that interview with elon like back in 2017 and mm-hmm. he was saying that ev is just gonna be the future you're gonna see it like any He's like, all these car companies are working on it right now, and there are only yeah. a few that are still working on like carbon emission cars. You know, like, yeah. he's like, but that's gonna that's gonna quickly die out. And we're in twenty twenty one. You could see it now. It's like, yeah, like that company just all unveiled straight EV cars. Yeah, that's all they talked about. Yeah, exactly. So it's um, like, this is the future. Uh, yeah, because it's gonna be happening in the next few years. So, and especially that the battery technology is there and that they will be improving on that over time. Yeah. That, yeah, we're just going to, it's just going to be another digital car. Like the Tesla is what they totally. Like a yeah. lot of it was a copy of a Tesla. Right. A right, lot of right, the things right. that they were showing, but the, because they have like different types of luxury cars, they can, uh, they can more, do more things and they have better production type of experience. So, yeah, yeah, totally. So they can really focus on making the car look good. Or making it, I don't know, it depends on how, how you want to look at it. I'm, I'm going to cut this up because he was at South by South. I think it was South by Southwest or maybe it was the TED Talk. Oh, one of them. Mm-hmm. But uh, Elon was saying, like, he showed this picture of, uh, he's like, this is going to be the home of the future. And it was like a house with a car. Do you see this one? It's like a house with a Tesla in the front. And he's like, do you see those three panels? Those are electric uh, storage 
Yeah, the things. battery storage. Yeah. yeah, for the house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he's like, that roof isn't actually a roof. It's a solar panel roof. Yeah. And like, but this was years ago, right? Yeah. And then yeah, now yeah. we're starting to see like, oh, this is the future. Like, well, yeah, that was the vision then. It's already happening now, right? He's, he's like, to me, he's like the most prominent futurist. Yeah. But uh, there's a long way to go because a lot of that design is more better suited for like California or like, warmer climates oh uh, yeah, yeah totally so it's like you gotta here. yeah yeah, yeah sure. as it gets it's gonna take a while to get there but that's but you're saying the focus is on batteries now right it's like making well, the well yeah because well with gm they don't make other stuff right they're just focusing on making cars so i think the focus is on the how efficient the battery can be right right right, right. And i think that if you learn if to figure out a new battery technology that charges quick um and you have long range, I think these things will also help anything that uses battery. Totally. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, yeah. So now that's the real push. It's like who can create sustainable, like longer lasting batteries. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And and I, uh, I think I think that's going to happen. They're already trying to figure it out. So, with, uh, with somebody like Elon, it's weird like that you can, you can see the future so clearly. Mm-hmm. And you're like working towards it, and it's, you know, it, it's weird how like when you, because there's like a lot of futurists out there, right? There's a lot of like books that come out and they say like, oh, this is what our future will look like. Yeah. But it's different when it's like you're theorizing it, and then another person's like theorizing it but doing it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And uh, he, he was talking about how uh, he would have hired, he would have hired a different uh, rocket engineer for spacex Mm -hmm. but nobody wanted to take on the project because they thought it wouldn't work so he became the rocket engineer and then he hired somebody as the ceo to run the actual business so he would focus on like the actual engineering Mm -hmm. it's like we need more more people like that in the world yo you know what i mean like well yeah i mean that's there's as far and few between but yeah they're there in in his book it was so funny they're like um the greatest minds of today are spending most of their time trying to figure out how to get you to click on ads. <laughs> right? Like it's like nobody's like That's true. Right. Nobody's like going for like he he said that the reason why he started SpaceX is because he kept looking at the NASA website. He's like, Oh, what does our future look like? You know, are, are we going like we land on the moon, what's next? And they were never doing updates. So he's like, Okay, I need to do this because and then they asked him like, why are you doing this? Right. And he's like, because if if I don't do it, then the future just looks depressing to me. And who wants to live in a world that's a depressing future? Right. Yeah. Anyways. And now, now they have contracts with NASA. Yeah, exactly. yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I like that approach. It's like, but it goes back to the whole like fear versus love thing. You know, like, are you more motivated by fear or love? And like, I think overwhelmingly, fear beats out every time. You know, are you you can't you can't um, discount our desire for survival Mm -hmm. of something, you know, like for him, it's survival of his happiness, right? Or else he's going to wake up every day being sad. Like, why are we not progressing as a species kind of thing? Yeah. Yeah. That's why CES is so cool. So anyways, back to CES. Yeah. CES is a really cool thing just to see what the future looks like. Yeah, totally. I agree. Right. And I mean, some of these things are very near future. So it's not like, 10 years down the line. It's like three years down the line. Yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah. The, um, those auto driving cars, um, the, the one, the concept car that, was it Ford who showed? It's like you all just get in and then it'll drive you to the next spot. Mm, not sure. Like or the, the one with the one with like the hover car as well. Oh yeah. It's GM. GM, GM. Okay. So like, uh, it's, it's interesting cause I think it was like two years ago when we did a podcast on, CES at that time they were showing like 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 J- Japan was showing these like crazy driverless cars and you were showing it to me and I was like oh this is gnarly but then like now GM has taken the helm and is like we're gonna do our own driverless cars you know <laughs> yeah they all see it they all see that is potentially where it's going now yeah even like Elon Musk with like he's doing the driverless car thing and it's, it's kind of like, already there right yeah for it, his stuff it's like a, what's that movie uh, Minority Report when mm-hmm. they showed the highway and then nobody's actually driving. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. then you can select manual drive. 
in it because that's how he escaped the cops in, Man- in Minority Report. Right, right. Like right. he was in a car that was like auto driving and they hit manual and then he was like driving past everyone. Yeah. I wonder if the, I think in our future, I don't, if it becomes all driverless, I don't think the option to drive will we'll be there. Yeah. Cause yeah. like, why would you put that because in Because that is hands? much more riskier. But what's crazy is like, that'll be an, uh, an old skill driving. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Even manual driving right now is an old skill. You know, right. like who drives manual? Well, no one. Well, well I, I like it. I, I drive manual. My sister's car. No, I know. Yeah. Which is an old car. So, but yeah, it's like, that's going to be a skill that's not even needed. I, well, it, well, if, if everything is becoming electric, there is no manual. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But you were saying like, it's like one. It's one, one pedal. Yeah. One pedal driving. You can pretty much drive with. Yeah. One pedal. Yeah. Because when you release the pedal, it automatically slows down the car. Yeah. Oh, and not like. I remember I told Francis and he's like, yeah, but don't all cars do that when you let, let go of the gas? But it's like, no, it's like active braking. Yeah, it's 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 much more different uh, feeling. Um, it is like as if you're braking feeling. Yeah. If, if you're if you're if you know what driving a manual feels like, it's like when you release the clutch in order to slow down the car. It's like it's like you're using the man, um, you're using the clutch as a brake mm, instead yeah. of the brake pad. Yeah, that was the that was what I read online. That's what it what it feels like. But I don't know how to drive. The thing, yeah, so yeah, yeah. Uh, that was the best way to, for me to explain it to you. So. Yeah, but yeah, but I get it now. Like when you when you said that, I'm like, okay, yeah, I can see how you would drive with that. It yeah. just it just it's better because you don't have to use the brake pad. Yeah, and exactly. Like, yeah, you're not using the brake pad, but like you gotta, it's a it's a learning curve too, right? So yeah, totally. to remember to do it like that. But again, it, uh, these things are um, best in in warm conditions, though, right? There are, it doesn't use as much, uh, like during the winter, if it's too cold. Oh yeah. yeah like ice. But it does, it's not just with ice, it's just the like cold, I guess, something to do with that. But if it's oh, okay. it warmed up, it's fine. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. The, um, the hover cars that GM showed off, mm-hmm. uh, that, I don't know. Like I get, I get Elon's point when you're saying like, so, so they're like, well, are we going to have hover cars in the future? And then Elon was like, well, how would you feel? Like, we all want one, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But how would you feel if your neighbor had one? And you're like, ooh, do I trust them not flying into my house? You know? And he's like, instead of flying cars, let's just create tunnels. Because you can go infinitely downward as you can go infinitely upward, mm-hmm. right? Because you just have, like, so many... um so many tunnels like so many thousands of feet deep it doesn't really matter right it, it would be as if you're flying except you're not flying right does that, does that make sense you know what i mean like yeah, yeah, yeah. you have infinite amounts to go upwards but you also have infinite amounts to go downward because you just drill deeper mm-hmm. yeah well yeah I, cool. I know that's why he has boring company that's what it, that's for right yeah, but apparently that's only like two percent of his time. He said, and it's like run no, it's by, still small. Yeah, he's like it's run by like interns. He said is like yeah, yeah, it's yeah. not like a big thing. Yeah, no, they need to get contracts to do these things. Yeah, they totally. They before they can the shift team. over. Yeah. yeah, but because he has, he was like the Tesla and SpaceX. I think they made a tunnel between the two. That's how they. Oh, that's cool. Proof of concept. Oh, was showing how that would work. That's cool. So then that's why it's also driverless like the car wouldn't just go yeah, yeah. through and yeah it, it was so funny too like the person's like well wouldn't you feel it if it was under you i guess he was thinking like a subway right like mm. if we lived under a subway mm. you can feel like it rattle um especially in new york not really here because i actually no i remember i was in the office building and there's a subway stop and you can you can hear it going gah, 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 gah. but even though i was on the 16th floor mm. 16th floor up okay. like yeah. that's crazy yeah, that i could yeah, hear yeah. it yeah you know um, so then the guy was like, well, wouldn't you just hear it? And he's like, no, you just drill further down. And if you could, if you could actually create a device that would detect our tunnels, then you would sell that to like, um, these, like, like I think, uh, Iran, cause they, they have a drug problem. He was saying like, like the tunnels that are built there to like get drugs. In oh, and out. Yeah, yeah. He's like, you would just sell it to them and then you'd make millions of dollars. Mm-hmm. And then the guy was like laughing and he's like, oh, that's funny. He's like, what's funny about that? <laughs> but because it was so logical, it's like, that's true. You know? Yeah. Like if you could feel it, if you could, if they do a good job of it, you won't feel it. Yeah. But yeah, that's another, like a long 
Yeah, that's going to take a long time to drill too because it, it's not that fast. Yeah, he was saying it's like um, <laughs> it's the uh, speed of a snail. Yeah. And they, they have this thing in their office for the boring company that's like, let's beat the snail speed. It's like a yeah, snail yeah, counter yeah. and they're like trying to go faster than the snail's movement because that's how fast they can drill yeah, right yeah, now. Yeah. They're still building, things. yeah, they're still building, uh, building like better, better drilling equipment or whatever yeah exa- yeah exactly but they have to take it that slow to like not disrupt things too mm-hmm. heavily because you have you're you're building um well as you drill through it you're also building the frame i think oh okay yeah because you just don't drill it and then you have to you're putting the frame in like the what if there are like given this this concept what if there are underground bases on mars you know what i mean like yeah, yeah. you never know like if the if the top surface world of earth becomes in it uninhabitable if we have this infrastructure of like like underground systems mm. we could just build homes there too yeah i heard that there there was a what do they call that not satellites the one, rovers on the okay one of them went like like they ended its life or whatever like just uh recently uh-huh. um but the, the it was supposed to drill down a few feet or something yeah but it didn't make it much further than like very little oh like, really yeah and they were trying for oh, like damn. over two years they were trying different areas or like figuring out a way to drill it they well, what like i guess the area where they went was a bit more like bedrock or like super tough to break through so it was right, like a, right. there's a like they spent two years trying to do it, but then they're like, okay, well, we can't keep wasting our time on this but, one. But also, that rover is just a rover. It's not like a real. It's not like it's no, not no. like they have scientists there. No, but I mean, like, you wouldn't you need like a scientist team to be like, okay, let's build something that can break through this. No, the, no, 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 no. Okay. The, the the rover they sent was for the drilling. Oh, it's specifically yeah, yeah, for. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. I thought it was like it had a drilling bit on no, no, it. No, 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 no. When they to... sent this one, this one specifically for for drilling down to that. Oh, and they couldn't do it, eh? Yeah, they just. I guess that area, the location where they put it, was the the ground was way too hard than they originally thought. Yeah, interesting. It would be really fascinating if there was like underground bases on Mars. <laughs> Not saying there is, but you know. Anyways, so CS, anything else? CES, yeah, I mean, there's oh, the normal stuff. Um, I don't know if this is a part of CS, but the haptic suit. You know what I'm saying, like, mm-hmm. did, you, did you see this haptic suit anywhere? I didn't see that, but it seems to be around CES time. Maybe they did, but everything was all digital, right? This year, since <laughs> oh, true. So they just do a presentation whenever they're ready to do it. I guess that's so, kind of what it was. So with CES, is it like? It's not like uh, queued up. It's like you would go to these. It's queued up. They have an event. I mean, they have it all scheduled out. Oh, okay, okay. So but like at this time is this keynote, or at this time is this one. It's all all done in one channel? Uh, Yeah, I mean, you can go to their own individual thing, but there was a CES channel or a YouTube channel. Basically. Oh, that was like showing them all. Okay, yeah. okay, makes sense, makes sense. Because yeah. I was wondering like, because I saw that article about the haptic suit, and like I don't know if it was at CES or not. Sometimes, uh, some so sometimes so like normally at CES, it's like you get the big guys do the keynotes, right? Yeah, like GM would do it, or like Mercedes did something, or like Sony does oh, something, right? And then right? you have like small booths, and then you have boots that have oh, yeah, like makes sense. showing off, like if they're a smaller company, just showing off some tech they're working on or something. Oh, okay, okay. So maybe it's one of those things. That makes sense. Yeah. So basically, if you've seen Ready Player One. They have the vest and the arms for it now, and you can buy it for like five hundred bucks. And it has like thirty trigger points on it, so you could feel some stuff. Mm-hmm. But I mean, like this is still pretty rudimentary, but we're getting to that point where it's like you're wearing a um, a haptic suit. That's funny because remember when we did the PS Five review? I was like, dude, we're like basically there. You already have the tech. You can just make a suit, and then like boom, CS. Yeah, somebody's already working on the suit. It's like okay, yeah. yeah. That's like the logical next step especially if you could if you feel the ps5's haptic ability it's pretty it's pretty stunning yeah and then to do it on to a suit i just want to know how because you'd have to work with the game right like how how did the haptic thing work i have no idea 
That's true. Like, if you bought this five hundred dollar model now, it's like it'd probably be outdated quickly. It's probably just for people who are like have so much money. They're like, let's just try this. Yeah, I heard that Xbox is looking at maybe making a haptic one too. Really? Yeah, they saw the success of the PS Five one. That's cool. So maybe they will. I'd be interested in that. Microsoft is a good. Uh, well, they have like a lot of tech people in there, you know. Mm-hmm. No, then then it makes it more more easier for de- developers to make the games include the haptic. Right, 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 right. Too. So interesting. Did they say it would be a controller, or are they looking at like an actual suit? No, no, no. Like controller, probably. Oh, okay. <laughs> we'll focus on the controller first. Remember when VR came out, and we were all saying like, "Oh, this is so next level." But VR has been there for a long time. True, no, no, it, it but has, like it, it has hadn't had a consumer yeah, version, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but like since a couple of years ago, it's it's up there, especially with the PSVR that I think made it more popular, yeah. But but like, so we we've created like what, what I envision in the future is like you can buy the full bodysuit with a VR cam, mm-hmm, and like mm-hmm. I wonder if controllers will just be gone in the future or whatever, you know. Well, yeah, I think so. It's, it'll be like a sensor. I don't know how, how it would work. Again. Yeah, true. I don't, I don't know. But do you see the digital keyboards? I kind of want to buy one. A digital keyboard? So it, it's uh you can get it off Amazon. It's like a light. Oh, that. Yeah, that was pretty cool, man. Uh, That's yeah. pretty innovative. This, it's, it's, I've seen it for a while. Like, it's been there for a while. Yeah, yeah I don't but know. It, but uh, I don't know. I, sometimes you want that ha- the, like the physical touch. The physical touch because you actually know which key you're pressing. Yeah, true, true, true. I agree. But it's just looking it's, at... It's, if you can create some version of where you can feel the two haptically, I don't know how. Oh, that would be so <laughs> then, they, then it's possible. Yeah. You, put, you put in like fingertip pads mm-hmm. and then like you use the laser and then it makes you... Or you have like gloves. Oh, actually, no, that is um, Minority Report again. <laughs> yeah. They had the gloves in order to like move things around. Dude... We could be there quickly. Like instead of using a controller, you have gloves mm. and then you move things with your fingers. Yeah. Oh, that's so trippy. We will oh, get to that. We so will get to that minority, trippy. minority report future. And especially if it's two, what if they made it feel like using haptics, like you're holding a controller? Mm hmm. Could you imagine that? Like you have like two gloves on and then it feels like there's a controller in your hand, but there's no controller. It's just using haptics. Right. Yeah, that's cool. I feel like the only reason why we know the word haptics is because of Ready Player One. <laughs> when they said it, the haptic suit, I'm like, oh, that's cool. What What does haptic even mean? What is it? Definition? <laughs> yeah, like is that like, you know what I mean? Like, is it an acronym? Is it like? Oh, I don't know. Uh, it's a good question. Like we throw this around like just because of the movie, but it's it's like the the new book that I'm reading, like the well I guess old book Neuromancer, and it's like this book started the whole um, cyberpunk uh, era mm. or genre. Well, the definition is just as we say it, the use of technology that simulates the sense of touch and motion. Oh, okay. So oh, okay. So there's no like I thought it would be like an acronym or something. Haptic. No. Yeah. Guess not. All right. Cool. So, yeah. Any, any other, any other tech you're stoked about? Oh, uh, tech. Um, I didn't really focus on other guys because <laughs> they are all just the general thing. It was just for the EV stuff, is what I was looking at. Oh, okay. So that that's the one that really stood out in your mind. Yeah, yeah. Then the other stuff is like the normal, like we always get like better graphics card or this, yeah, like, you yeah, know what I mean. Yeah. Like that's the normal stuff. That's fine. I think it's pretty cool with like in terms of the um, the masks, right? Because there's not just the one uh, filtration mask that they're working on. It's like, um, it it's like um, different companies are creating their own versions of this N95. Razor is just the one that I keep bringing up because it looks the most futuristic. Mm-hmm. But like, it's weird that, or not weird, but it's like interesting that these like these like usually computer related companies. Are like solving this other problem now yeah. to deal with like COVID. Right, right, yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's a whole bunch of new mask designs from different companies. Yeah, to, yeah. Not just the like Razor LG's one, making but, one too. Yeah, and that one's like more focused on like fresh, like air. Yeah. So it's yeah. like 
I it has if, filters in it or something. But they must be getting some sort of information that lets them know that this is going to be here for a while. You know, like the COVID thing. Uh, I think the mask wearing might be here for a while. But because why would you create a mask if you don't see a future demand for it? No, I, I even when COVID's gone, I still think people will wear masks. Oh really? What? Why? Oh, like for like regular flu yeah. and like yeah. yeah, it's just better, right? Yeah. That's so trippy. I don't think masks will go away just like that. Yeah, because they'll probably find like other uses for the mask mm-hmm. too. You know, it's like. Maybe construction, they'll use the mask or like, um, I don't know, because there's like a bunch of other viruses that you can also contract through that, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. Uh, through like, like um, moisture. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. I know. Like, the, like the flu, for example, like when, like I was reading that uh, they went down, like the cases for the flu. Yeah. Naturally, because like we're not spreading it like... Because we're focused on it, one they, thing, yeah, so it, everything's going down too. Uh, yeah, it's like, but there, there was, there was two things that happened with with the flu this year, though. It was like, like a five hundred percent increase in people taking the flu shot. Oh, okay. Yeah. And also everyone wearing masks. So it's like I think it's using both here to stop the spread of the flu. And and also like if we have these masks ready, it'll help with the next pandemic. Hmm. Yeah, it's weird. It's it's weird. Like, do you remember? Uh, uh, War of the Worlds, and like the one with Tom Cruise. Oh yeah, yeah. And then like they were dying, the people were dying, and then all of a sudden when they opened the the hatch, uh, all of the aliens started dying too. And right. then From... people were like, people were like, well, why are they dying? And then in the movie they were saying like they're not used to our environment, so like there's they're not inoculated against yeah. the viruses or whatever. So they just instantly like, started dying. But it's true though that that is what would happen. You know, mm-hmm. if we went to a different world, of course we would need suits as well, because we would also. I mean, that also applies to even people that, you know, the remote people that live in like who have no contact, and if oh, you yeah, come yeah, in true, contact true. with them, whatever you have on you can, can you wipe out the whole tribe. Yeah, yeah, true. That that's uh, that happened back in the day, right? Like syphilis. Yeah, something and like. Yeah. Uh, what was the other flu? There was like another thing that they wiped out all the Amazonians. Yeah. I don't know Small, what it was, no, but smallpox was one. Something was that smallpox? Spain brought, over? Yeah, 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 to yeah. the so, natives. So probably, yeah. So like the <laughs> smallpox, the smallpox. I don't know. I don't know. I, I knew the syphilis was one of them. Okay. Yeah. I, I don't know what it is, but like that's also you know true for us. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, humans yeah. itself. But that that's why like when you go into a different country, they're like make sure you take like your yellow fever shot or your like malaria pills, because mm-hmm. like we're not used to, or even like a uh, as simple as the. Was it hepatitis A, which is for like waterborne things? Sure. Like you, you don't want to get like stomach bugs. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So even the water is different around there. You know, it's like mm-hmm. yeah, interesting. Yeah. Yeah. But anyways, so do you think we're the aliens? We are the aliens. Yeah, if we believe in Battlestar Galactica story. But I know. I mean, like, <laughs> like if if we continue down this path, it's like, like, if we keep making tech at this rate, how far before we become the off-world aliens? How far? Uh, you know, what I mean? it's a long like way to go, but yeah. But like with SpaceX, right? We want to colonize Mars. That's like, I guess that's technically, very once we, if we reach, if we go to Mars, or we are officially the aliens. Yeah, we would be the aliens, of course. Yeah, but that's trippy, right? You never think about it from like a third person perspective, you or like a yeah, I guess third person perspective. You think of it from our first person perspective. Mm-hmm. So we're like, well, we can't be the aliens. We're like humans. But then it's like, well, if we went somewhere else, we would be the aliens, right? That we so fear mm-hmm. or embrace, whichever side of the coin you're on. <laughs> yeah, we, I I brought that up because I finished the uh, parent phenomenon, Apple Doc. Mm-hmm. And like, I just feel like it's so undeniable that there are aliens out there, or or water people, like France said. <laughs> it's either water people or aliens. Like it's either a species that we don't know exists on our planet, right. and they have tech that's more advanced than us. And the only place that I can see it happening is in the water, mm-hmm. you know, because it's undiscovered, and there there could be bases there. 
of course the gravity would be different so you need to learn how to harness gravity you know like with the whole yeah, like, yeah, yeah, the gravity yeah. propulsion stuff right so like i it's it's either water people or aliens <laughs> off worlders okay. yeah yeah because the evidence is so like insurmountable you know j- just like high high people in government like they can't all be lying you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. yeah i definitely recommend checking out that that dog the phenomenon so um implications of tech okay do you think we're well cuz i was saying that that documentary uh, the not talking about the podcast I'm listening to now. Mm-hmm. You're under yeah. my attention, and they were talking about like um, Russians, like Russian troll farms, mm-hmm. affecting our social media. Yeah, and then the only thing we can do is fight them with our bots. So it's like a bot battle. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, do you think we're opening up a can of worms that we don't realize the implications for with tech? Everything is new with tech. We don't know what is the outcome of anything we do. Right? Like, we don't know if, like, higher amounts of electricity are going to give us more cancer. Or, like, the 5G that everyone talks about. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it's so untested, but... Yeah. But it's in every generation, every... Anything that we do as humans. Yeah, anything that's new, yeah. Because we only have, like, what, 200 years of data that we can pull back into? Yeah, but, like, just... Yeah, anything new that happens, we always, like... There will be people who are skeptical about it. Then, true, yeah, yeah. But there's, it's it's a mixed bag. Sometimes you get a lot of good things out of it. Maybe some bad things. But like, yeah, like like our in, like with the whole Russian troll farms. It's like when they're creating separation between, um, like the left and the right in mm-hmm. the U.S. It's like yeah, nobody accounted for cybersecurity to that level. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Like, because because I can run an ad in Canada. For a different country. Like if I want to run ads in Peru, I can. There's no cybersecurity for that. There's no like you have to live in Peru to run an ad mm-hmm, in Peru. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, I, I just wonder with like CES too. Like with all the advancements, it's like how many people are thinking about the implications. I think when they're designing these things, most of them are just engineers and I know. And only thinking yeah. about a certain solution they want to solve, right? Yeah, they're not thinking about the problem. Yeah, but that's not their, their job. job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I think, I can't remember what technology they were talking about with that. They're like, people are like, oh, or it's like AI or something like that. Mm-hmm. They're like, oh, they're trying to control us. Like, no, we didn't think about that. We were just trying to solve an issue. Yeah. Maybe there should be like two teams of people, like the the creators and then like the police kind of thing, you know, <laughs> like trying to figure out ways to like, to like mitigate risk going forward you know what i mean or maybe there is something like that maybe i don't know <laughs> yeah one of one of the big issues with uh ai right now like that elon was saying is like it can get it's learning so quickly and it can get things incorrect so it's like oh if you want to maximize happiness right um it might just like take all of us and then inject us with dopamine and serotonin <laughs> you know we become like slaves uh-huh. yeah so you're saying like the best way to fix this is like we democratize ai which is like we have people saying yes or no to certain things but right now it's like not nobody's nobody's like regulating There's it no people are just building as fast as they can ai yeah just something to think but about. we only build regulations after the fact though. that's what i mean that's what you're saying it's like it's kind of dumb because like him watching like but that's with go. anything though. We don't know what something will bring out of it. We don't know. Right? True. Yeah, yeah. So totally. you can only create regulations after issues occur, right? Like Or else we'd just we'd just be moving too pragmatically. We wouldn't move forward fast enough. Because yeah. we'd be like like let's get too this precautious. Right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I think that would stagnate any kind of growth. growth. Yeah. True. So it's right. like do you so, want advancement or do you want safety <laughs> you know it's like you gotta pick and choose well yeah it's like it's like cars that first when the first cars came out it's like they didn't have seat belts true yeah exactly right? it's like yeah, oh yeah. shoot wait people are dying <laughs> it's like okay let's, let's create seat belts yeah, yeah totally. so it's like that's kind of what happens <laughs> that's true it, it does require 
see again is like motivated more by fear than out of love because like oh like well i guess you could say like technically the love of motive the love of creation but like when when you start to see the problem that's when you're like we need to fix this rather than being like let's altruistically think about it first like how could this harm someone right but you like don't know approach. all the issues until once it's out right you can think true. of any kind of thing but you can still get that wrong true true and and things change too because like i just saw this article it's like um why video games are actually really good for you mm -hmm. and remember um remember before they were saying like video games are like really bad because it kills like your social skills all this like and you're not exercising blah 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 and then like i looked at the article and it's like everything had changed like it makes you smarter <laughs> like all that like your problem solving skills are better you know it's mm. crazy yeah you well, were they, they were speaking out of fear right or like um the worst case scenario but but that's also what happened with books though yeah. it used to be bad to read books they were like all your heads in the books all the time yeah. right like back in the day when books started coming out and then people would just read all day they didn't like that and then now it's like totally flipped oh you don't read books oh you're, you're, you know what I mean it's yeah, like yeah. totally different yeah. yeah interesting like how things always change what were you going to say about the tech you were like no the video game thing was more like they they were already um, like issuing this like what they were afraid of what would happen I guess but not realizing other positives, right? Like that yeah, was totally, the, that yeah, was exactly. The same yeah. Thing. yeah. Yeah, for sure. But yeah, that's tough. Cause it's like, it's really just the media that's telling you if it's good or bad or not. You know, it's like really, you should just make up the decision yourself. I think a healthy balance of anything is, is good, you mm -hmm. know? Cause like, just don't do it too much and you'll be fine. That's yeah. That's the general rule for anything in, in, in life. I think. Yeah. True. Yeah. Um, you you were going to say something about a tech piece over there? Oh, yeah. Like, the, for phones, right? We talk about foldable phones and that thing. Now it's like the new thing is it's called like a rollable phone, like where oh, it rolls cool. out that the screen gets bigger. Okay. And then it also closes back in. Okay. So it's like... It's, like, um, it's not folding, right? So you have like a, a second... So you have like uh, essentially two two parts to it? No, just one part. Oh, and it just expands or contracts. Yeah. Okay. How does that work? No, yeah. no, you you definitely have two parts to it then. No, it's one screen. What? How do you stretch a screen? Yeah, that's, that's if, these if are OLED stuff. If you're wondering what we're talking about, this is showing me a video right now about um a phone screen that expands. Uh, according to if yeah, there's what you're no, watching. There's no divider between the screens. It's just one screen. Okay, so what you're saying is we're reaching a state where screens screens can be, become ah, screens can become stretchable? Yeah. That's wow. That's why they call it rollable. So then theoretically, because, all right, so like if you go to Times Square, you have like multiple screens running pieces of a video. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So, like, if, if you go to Times Square and you see, like, these giant video ads, right, what that typically is is it's multiple screens showing a piece of one image. Yeah. Stretch out across multiple screens. Mm -hmm. But you're saying that, um, well, the tech that's coming up is, like, now you can have one giant stretchable screen that will. Yeah, well, I don't know how big they video. can make them, but that's for the, they were showing that off for the phone. It's still a concept, though, right? Have they created it or? I think they created it. That was the video of them having it. Oh, wow. All right. I think they've already done it on the TV. Like I've seen, I think it was LG that did like a rollable TV. Okay. Where it, you can, because it's, it's OLED. It's kind of like. Uh, R rollable in terms of like if you have a fabric that you're unraveling. Kind of like that. But it's, it's Except it's OLED. not. I guess that wouldn't be the case because it's. That's one fabric that you're unro unrolling, so it's really just one screen. So it's more like it's one screen. So if you have, it's it's like a plastic glove that you can blow into and it stretches. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Wow, that's pretty intense. So it's like malleable tech. Mm hmm. Cool. What's the video called? In case people want to watch it. Well, I don't know. You just search LG rollable. Those are the only ones who I think showed off one. So. Yeah, check that out. LG rollable. And you'll see a um, 
stretchy screen. They're uh, yeah, they're just showing it off, but like, uh, yeah, it looks a little rollable. No, they didn't really talk about it too much. But that looks CGI to me. That's why I'm saying it's like. No, I think they physically made it. Yeah, they're yeah. like hinting at it here. There's something coming up. Soon. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, see, with all this tech, I wonder what like laptops will look like in the future. You know what I mean? Like. Mm-hmm. It's gonna like even with this um when the the Max came out with their new black sleek one that's like thin, when I hold my current laptop, even though it's like very powerful, it feels so outdated because of the shell. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? As compared to like the, I feel like we're just advancing at such. No, a but there's there they they offer two different things, right? Now, yours should be more powerful. Yeah, but in but in terms of like the look and feel of it it doesn't feel futuristic now i think where i think in the next couple of years now that apple officially came out with their m1 chip and they're going to be building more or advancing more in that mm-hmm. their own like their own chip so they don't have to use intel or anything they mm-hmm. will probably design it much more there will be a lot of design changes i feel like really coming, eh? yeah okay That's they exciting. can be more efficient with it that they don't need to have like fans necessarily Ooh, that's cool. Oh, it's sort of like um, like SSDs and uh, solid state drives and mm-hmm. uh, the traditional ones that are like they use disks, disk drives. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So like, uh, I I have a, an SSD or like a flash drive, right? Mm-hmm. SSD is a flash drive. Yeah. So I have a flash drive that has no um, nothing rotating in it. And it's super fast. Right. Yeah. Well. What I'm saying was they are making their own chip, so they know how to efficiently uh, use the, like, like again, everything's built in-house, so they can yeah, make yeah. everything more efficient, right, really right. work together. No, but but that's why, like, you won't need a fan, because it's like, we're progressing to this, like, this mm, more, uh, like, succinct future. Like, not succinct, but, like, no additional unnecessary stuff like like you're like we don't need a fan because this chip will make it better yeah more efficient where the, the energy doesn't need as much so it doesn't need heat like it won't generate That's, so much yeah heat. yeah I, i'm not saying like that they're gonna make one without a fan but like or oh, okay. like this is some of the things i think was some of the, one of the computers that they came out with this this year I think doesn't have a fan, but like the pro one does have a fan because cause you want to get more output out of it. Oh, okay. So okay. you can, something like that. Interesting. Yeah. Do you remember the concept that this was like well over 12 years ago, the Nokia phone that's like a wrist strap as mm-hmm. well. Mm-hmm. That's crazy. And I feel like with the OLED, the stretchy screen thing, I yeah. feel like it could, could be going there. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, that's why the foldable thing was starting that. And then you got a stretch, like a rollable one. But but the foldable one was a big fail, right? Like they kept cracking that one. Like it's like two screens and then you unravel it. Yeah, no, no. I think there's there's different companies that have built different things. It'll get better over time. Right, right? totally. But the first one, sure. I think they fixed that issue, whatever that was the thing. Yeah. But they are still selling the the foldable ones. Oh, okay. Um, But the, like... I think the rollable one makes more sense so then you don't have to fold it. <laughs> yeah, totally. I, I agree. So, but, but that's that's what will be trippy in the future. It's like your phone will also be a bracelet that you can wear. Yeah, as as it gets thinner and thinner that you don't... I've seen... That there were CS concepts even last year where it's like it's the really a thin film uh-huh. and that has video playing on it. Yeah, So yeah. it's like that you can just stretch it and put it around your wrist or whatever. See, that's trippy. So like they just have to figure out because where it's connected to get the video, like that's, I mean, these are like still concepts. Yeah. yeah. But like um, for proof of the concept. Yeah. yeah. Now they just got to, as technology gets better, then they can figure out like how to make it. It's it's funny, like even. with um, like the Neuromancer book and like me getting into Blade Runner, it's like I'm, I think I'm like excited to like watch that stuff now because it's actually a possibility that we can conceive. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like holograms are real, um, gene splicing's real, um, like foldable tech, like wearable tech. Like you were saying, yeah. that's like thin and stretchable. That's real, or soon to be real. You know, I think 
without knowing it, we'll have entered the Blade Runner future. Well, yeah, I mean, we're supposed to have already got it by now from the original Blade Runner. Like, yeah, exactly. Yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it's we're not there yet. But I feel like I feel like we'll look up one day and be like, oh, we're already here. So the, yeah, like the CES, because it's like. It, like we have a medicine drip method. Like with CES, it's showing you like ten years down the line. But like if you watched mm -hmm. uh, CES from ten years ago, we'll be like, oh, we already have those things. You know what I mean? It's like it's like showing you preview of the future, but on a consumer level, it's all medicine drip, so they don't notice how far we've come. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right, right. But you know, uh, CES is good to see all these different ideas and stuff. But sometimes some of them, they're not consumer. You consumerly can't, like, friendly or yeah, whatever it's not economically it's not gonna, feasible like, yeah and it's not it's, it won't happen but like it's just cool that certain tech exists or you can yeah, do true. it true right true so yeah yeah cool so uh it's a yearly event yeah 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 yearly okay so definitely check out uh ces if you haven't the highlight videos they're all on youtube and um yeah get stoked for the future all right, so until next time, be sure to check out ZenRealClothingCo.com. Use offer code Socrates for 20% off select items. And uh, if you're not into spending the money, check out the free Zenro Radio playlist, dope music for daily life. And if you are located in the Portion area of Scarborough, Toronto, check out the Portion Bakery, say what's up to Arval, give them an air high five. Yeah. The future is coming. <laughs> Take it easy, Vash.